East Alabama saw almost nine tenths of the solar eclipse this afternoon. And some area homeowners can now apply for grants to do some minor repair work this summer. And a group of local majorettes received training on Saturday while helping raise money for a good cause at the same time. Wet weather returns to East Alabama this week. We will have the complete forecast for all of East Alabama coming up. Coming up in sports, we have an update on a local renovation for a local football program. Also, we take a preview at the games for the night ahead. EAN Local News starts now. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by WM Grocery, located in Heflin, Wadawi, Roanoke, and in Piedmont. Hello, we're glad you could join us. I'm Katie Edwards. And I'm Mike Stedham. If you were wondering why the sky got so dark around 2 o'clock this afternoon, blame the moon for blocking out most of the sunlight. The North American solar eclipse of 2024 was a celestial phenomenon that covered a large portion of the United States this afternoon, plunging millions into darkness. The total eclipse didn't cover any part of Alabama, but in our area, about 86% of the sun's rays were deflected by the moon's shadow. Groups gathered throughout East Alabama where clouds were mostly scattered and gave viewers a chance to see the partial eclipse safely through special glasses. Within a few minutes, the darkest part of the eclipse had moved away, and by a little after 3 o'clock, the skies had returned to normal. The Anniston Changers today began taking applications for its fifth round of home improvement grants. These will be awarded for minor residential property repairs that correct a health or safety hazard, and they may be up to $2,500 per home. The money will come from the City of Anniston Fund, established with the Community Foundation of Northeast Alabama. Those grants were awarded by the Anniston Changers, a group of volunteers who also partner with community members and organizations to complete monthly service projects throughout Anniston. According to a news release from the group, Anniston residents who apply for the home improvement grants must meet three criteria in order to be eligible. First, they must own a home within the city limits of Anniston. Next, they must be over 60 years old or mentally or physically disabled or have a low income. Finally, the home must be their primary residence. The grant money must be used for repairs that correct a minor health or safety hazard. Examples of work done in the recent past include wheelchair ramps, window replacement, minor roof patching, minor plumbing repairs, and minor deck and awning repairs. Applications are due by May the 13th, and those awarded grants are responsible for finding their own contractors to do the work. Grant Review Committee members will evaluate the applications on a competitive basis and make the recommendations to the Community Foundation's Board of Trustees. Applicants will be notified by email of award decisions and those decisions are final with no appeal. For more information, residents may contact Lethea Kortner, Scholarship and Grants Coordinator for the Community Foundation, at 256-231-5160, extension 24, or by email at lkortner at cfnea.org. When we return, another local school system will spend most of this week evaluating how effective its classes really are. Since 1993, WM Grocery has been a major part of our local community. WM offers the very best in fresh produce and an outstanding meat department. WM also has many local products not found anywhere else and fresh sushi every day. If you need an event catered, come see Mrs. K at any WM store. Curbside pickup is also available for your online grocery orders. Be sure to download the WM app for all the deals of the week and shopper rewards. Go check them out today at any of their locations. We take pride in our community and appreciate your business. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Oxford Lumber. Come visit any of our locations in Oxford, Jacksonville, Talladega, and Roanoke. For most Alabama students, ongoing standardized testing is a low-stakes game. Students take the test, but are not graded on them. But for Alabama third graders, the stakes are higher. That's because for the first year, 
their performance on the reading portion of the exams, known as ACAP exams, can influence whether they are allowed to move to the next grade. It's an aspect of the exam that is causing jitters for the state's eight and nine-year-olds. That really got to some of my kids, even though I tried to explain to them that, you know, we've worked hard all year, we know what we're doing. With some students, they still did tend to get very nervous with the test. I just tried to reassure them because we have worked hard all year. Um, I know the work that they've put in and I just tried to remind them of that. The reading portion of the exam is part of a larger battery of tests that students take in grades two through eight. Student scores are used to gauge schools teaching in every instance except for the third grade reading portion of the exam. To be deemed proficient, a student must score a 435 on the exam, Reese said. If they do not, moving up to fourth grade becomes harder but not impossible. State School Superintendent Dr. Eric Mackey says there are three pathways for advancement for students who do not score well enough on the exam. Retesting after additional instruction, portfolio review, or provisions provided to students with learning differences. There is a lot of angst um, and concern, some anxiety from third grade teachers and principals, but also certainly from parents of third graders. Summer Davis, the Deputy Superintendent of Calhoun County Schools said local educators are aware that test time can be nerve-wracking for the whole family. She said that while the tests are important, she encourages local families to remember that the test is limited in its ability to measure a student's value in the classroom and beyond. I think, you know, it is important. We want our kids to do the to do the best they can. But I also think we have to remember that it's just one test. You know, um, it's not going to show all that your child knows. There's no way one test can capture that. So while we do want our kids to do their best, we want them to show, you know, um, progress. But if a child doesn't do well, it's one day in time. And by the way, EAN News thanks the students of Jacket Media at Oxford High School for supplying us with much of the video that we've been using during our recent stories about the ACAP testing. As far as we are concerned, they all made A's on this assignment. When we come back, several area students learn new techniques of baton twirling. For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family. To enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Waltrip Manufacturing, metal buildings made right here in Calhoun County. Livy Thomas, who holds the title of Miss Volunteer Alabama for 2024, was in Oxford this weekend for a baton twirling clinic. Thomas says the program was part of her fundraising activities in preparation for this summer's national competition to select Miss Volunteer America. Today we are at the Bynum Community Center in Oxford, Alabama, and we are going to be doing a baton twirling clinic. All of the proceeds raised from this are going straight to St. Jude which is our National Miss Volunteer America sponsorship. And we are so excited to be partnering with them throughout this year and to be helping them and donating to them. Thomas says her clinic helped the students improve their technique in their dance and baton routines. The workout was geared for advanced twirlers who will be trying out for high school and college programs this year. Thomas has been twirling for 17 years and has eight years of experience as a twirling coach. She spent four years as a Crimsonette for the University of Alabama, and she was co-captain of the twirling team this past year. I am just so excited to have all of these girls out here today to learn some new tricks. It is currently tryout season for all the different colleges and a couple of high schools as well. Livy's next pageant will be in Jackson, Tennessee, June 17th through the 22nd, where she will be competing in Miss Volunteer America in swimsuit, talent, evening gown, and interview. So, Katie, where were you when the lights got dim today? <laughs> I was just at home. It was not very exciting, but I did see the change in the environment. What about you? Well, well definitely in our home, 
It fooled our cats completely. <laughs> they thought it was nap time. They slept through the whole thing. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, well, it was amazing. I could have done the same thing. Just well, like I think that. most of us probably could have. <laughs> John Holder joins us now in the EAN Weather Center to tell us what we can expect for tomorrow's weather. John? Mike and Katie, tomorrow and for the next several days, we've got some wet weather returning to East Alabama. We'll talk about the chance for some flooding rains coming in our forecast. For metal buildings in Alabama and the southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop metal building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing serving the entire southeast. Give them a call today. Before the clouds moved in this afternoon, we had plenty of sunshine. Actually, it was very good eclipse watching weather around 2 o'clock this afternoon when we had the peak of the eclipse here in East Alabama. 80 degrees, then the clouds moved in and temperatures dropped, but still above average for this time of year. Our low this morning at 50 degrees, right about the average for the early part of April in East Alabama. 87, the record high temperature, 26, the record low. Our sun rising tomorrow at 6.20 a.m. And look at that sunset, not until 10 minutes after 7 o'clock tonight. Time for weather on your street for a Monday night on Natville Road, just north of Piedmont. A few light showers tonight passing through. 58 for the low overnight tonight up in Piedmont and all across East Alabama. As we move into the day tomorrow, looking at about a 50-50 chance of rain. So Glendale Road and Anniston on the east side of town there, looking at about 71 tomorrow. So with all the clouds and all the rain in place, temperatures are going to be about 10 degrees cooler than today, but again, right about average for this time of year. And again, the chance of rain in any one spot tomorrow, about 50%. As we look at the rest of the work week, Mostly wet weather coming up. Passing showers on Case Avenue in Atala, right over there by Etowah High School in Atala. Temperatures generally in the 70s for highs this week. Well, some sunshine at times. We're going to have some rain, especially on Wednesday. We mentioned flooding rain earlier. We're going to talk about the chance for some flooding rainfall here in East Alabama as we look at our seven day forecast. You will see a lot of rain coming up. 50% chance of rain tomorrow, a 60% chance on Wednesday. That chance of rain goes to 100% on Wednesday night. Still a 50% chance of a shower during the day on Thursday. Temperatures remain very mild, 71 tomorrow, 77 on Wednesday, 70 on Thursday. Nighttime lows right there around the 60 degree mark all the way through the end of the work week here in East Alabama. And we're going to be looking again at rainfall amounts over the next three days that could total anywhere from two to four inches across East Alabama. The good news is we're going to clear out for the weekend. Friday, plenty of sunshine and dry. The high at 70. We're back in the upper 70s with sunshine by Saturday. A beautiful weekend. Back in the 80s again by Sunday. Again, no chance of rain in the forecast. And beginning on Sunday, it looks like we have a big stretch of 80 degree temperatures, about 10 degrees above the average for this time of year coming up for most of next week across East Alabama. We mentioned a couple of times flooding rainfall. Here is the excessive rainfall outlook. This is Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday night. Three to six inches of rainfall. That's not going to be common. That's in some of the higher totals, but we can expect about two to four inches of rainfall across most of East Alabama. You see the slight risk, moderate risk line that runs and cuts through our viewing area just about in half, about half of Etowah County, about half of Calhoun County in the moderate risk. Then you've got the halves of those two counties plus Cleburne County being in the slight risk that we're going to see excessive rainfall. Again, most locations could see two to four inches, some locations higher than that as we get into Wednesday and Wednesday night across East Alabama. I'll be back here tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. We'll have the complete look at your Tuesday day part by day part coming up tomorrow. I'll be back here tomorrow evening with EAN Local News as we'll detail that flood threat coming up during the day on Wednesday. Right now, it's sports time. Big changes coming to Watt Mosby Memorial Stadium at Anniston High School. Namath Pitts has the story right now in sports. Namath. Thanks, John. The Anniston football program, similar to Jacksonville State University, has had to work around construction. 
Aniston is currently in the middle of a renovation, but here are where things stand as of today. If you have driven past Lot Mosby Stadium recently, then you would notice just how different it looks. There is currently, you're about to see in the video footage right here, there is currently no field, there is no visitor bleachers, it's just sand pits and emptiness. The stadium is currently under renovation, with May being the finish date, although that is unknown at the moment. Aniston is expecting a new artificial turf playing field and new visitor bleachers. The football stadium was built in 1938 and has, had, has not had many upgrades since. So Aniston is due for new facilities. The renovation is a whooping $1.6 million renovation. This will be the biggest makeover of the stadium in the 84 year history of the stadium. Will the stadium be completed by graduation services in May? Only time will tell, although it looks like it's still on schedule. Rain is in the forecast for this week, but it is the final week of area games for baseball in the state of Alabama. The playoffs are expected to start next weekend. So how will things shape out? Well, here are the games for East Alabama tonight. Tonight it is Mumford on the road at Oxford at Chakalaka Park. This is non-area, but obviously Mumford and Oxford have been rivals in years past. It's area championship night. This is a doubleheader at Piedmont as Coach Matt Dearman and the Piedmont Bulldogs host Coach J.D. Phillips and the Welburn Panthers. Again, that is a doubleheader area championship. Aniston, although they are eliminated from the playoffs, they will head to Jacksville tonight to face Jamison Edwards' team, who has clinched the area championship in Class 4A, so Aniston travels to Jacksonville. Also tonight, this is a big one. Appalachian has already clinched the number one spot in this area in Class 1A, but Jacksville Christian coach Tommy Miller and Coach Joshua Ray of Faith Christian, those teams are competing for the second spot to try to get into the playoffs. Tonight, Faith Christian will host Jacksonville Christian with the winner of this series headed to the playoffs. Similar to baseball, this is a big week for area games in softball with their playoffs approaching as well. So here's the softball action for tonight in East Alabama. Let's start with the Oxford Yellow Jackets, just like baseball for them. It's non-area tonight is Oxford Class 6A host Moody Class 5A. Now this next game is an area game as Coach Rachel Smith and the Piedmont Bulldogs travel to Sachs tonight to face the Wildcats. This one is also an area game as the Glencoe Yellow Jackets come to the Creek Bank tonight to face Coach Poe and the Ohatchee Indians. For Coach Brenna Vinson and the Welburn Panthers, they travel to Weaver tonight to face Coach Fulmer. That is an area game in Class 3A. How about baseball, Jacksonville Christian Academy versus Faith? Well, softball tonight, it's Jacksonville Christian Academy versus Faith. And this is also an area game. It's also an area game for Coach Bryant and the Pleasant Valley Raiders. They're at home tonight where they will host Ramburn in Class 2A. And then for Cleburne County, it's 4A versus 4A, but it's non-area as the Cleburne County Tigers travel to Talladega County tonight to face Mumford. There are only three soccer games tonight. There are only three games tonight on the soccer field, but the hunt for a playoff spot is getting smaller and smaller. Here are the soccer games for tonight in East Alabama. It starts with Oxford in Class 6A. They travel north tonight where they head to Fort Payne. This is an area game in 4A through 6A. Tonight, the Sacks Wildcats have an area game in Class 1A through 3A as they travel to Collinsville. And finally, the final game of the night, it is also area, but it's just girls. The guys will not play tonight, it's just girls, as the Weaver Bearcats ladies will be at home tonight where they will host Faith Christian. I want to remind everyone that you can get the scores, stats, and results of tonight's games tomorrow at 5 p.m. on our East Alabama Now, The Locker Room. That's it for EA and Local Sports. Let's go back over to Mike and Katie. Thanks for that update, Namath, and we thank you for watching today. You can find us here online every weekday on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, or on our website. Just go to the platform of your choice and watch our news, sports, and weather coverage whenever it's convenient for you. We'll see you back here Tuesday for your news on your schedule.